welcome everybody i am professor sunita mishra from the center for english language studies university of hyderabad i would like to introduce myself briefly i teach at the center for english language studies at the university of hyderabad and primarily i am engaged with teaching the masters and the research students working in the area of english language studies as part of english language studies we do a lot of work in teaching linguistics in teaching methods of english language teaching and sometimes even going on to the history of english the history of english language in india etc apart from this i also teach the undergraduate students and these are students across disciplines and apart from the teaching i love to do a lot of reading i love to do a little bit of painting I also love to listen to old Hindi songs and I watch a lot of films. Today I am here as the instructor for this module titled Thinking Critically. I welcome you all to participate in the week 3 module 3 of this massive online open course on life skills for engineers. Let me before beginning briefly introduce the course to you. critical thinking is not new to any of us all of us do it as part of our everyday life many times a day let's compare it to the skill of walking running or even talking we all know how to walk run or talk naturally we are born with these skills whether taught or not we will start doing it eventually but to be able to walk like a champion to be able to run like a champion or to be able to talk like an orator we might have to train a little that is why to be very good at thinking skills to be work like a professional in the area of critical thinking to be able to use it whenever it is necessary we might have to train a little at critical thinking skills and probably that is what this course will help you to do it will help us use our thinking skills appropriately wherever necessary the way it has to be used etc now in this module i shall be dealing with the following the first part of the module i'll be talking about the basic concepts and the different frameworks which have conceptualized or framed the thinking skills different kinds of frameworks have been used for talking about thinking skills for conceptualizing thinking skills and here we shall talk about the few popular frameworks and the ones which have been used extensively in the field of education secondly we'll be talking about the different aspects of thinking skills what are the different capacities that make up the concept the idea the capacity called thinking skills finally after this i'll be going on to a tool to do critical thinking that is mind mapping a very interesting tool which can help you do not only critical thinking but many other things associated with your daily life and academics as well after this we shall be talking about critical thinking skills for engineers looking at what are the basic features involved in doing the critical thinking in the field of engineering not very different from what we do earlier on but specifically we'll try to apply these to the field of engineering and finally i have got two case studies for you which we'll be looking at and we'll see how these critical thinking skills can be used in these specific cases which we are going to discuss let me also talk to you about a little about the evaluation scheme for this course i'll be throwing the module open for interactive forum maybe thrice that should be comfortable with all of you and once after we discuss the first assignment we'll be having an open forum and after that we can discuss the case studies one at a time we can even have a forum on a mind mapping and we can discuss how it best can be done i can even take questions on whether you have been able to do it successfully 
The module will be followed by a quiz where we will be giving you 25 multiple choice questions of 2 marks each. By the time you complete this module, I hope you will be more conscious of your use of thinking skills. You will be able to identify when you will use them, how you should use them. This I am sure will encourage you to use it more often in your personal and professional life. Hope you enjoy doing the module. We will come to the next part of the first lecture where I will be talking to you about the concept of critical thinking. I would like to give you a very often a quote which is used very often which says critical thinking is the awakening of the intellect to the study of itself. Very interesting. The awakening of the intellect to the study of itself. Awakening here would mean something like becoming aware, becoming conscious, thinking about thinking or even doing what is otherwise called meta thinking. Now, critical thinking can be defined as a process of conceptualizing, as a process of applying, as a process of analyzing and as a process of synthesizing available information and arriving at new information. Let us look at each of these components a little bit in detail. Conceptualizing can be looked at contriving an idea, inventing an idea, formulating an idea, thinking of a new kind of idea. Applying can be looked at pertaining to the use of this idea, using an idea in certain kinds of fields, relating the idea to certain other kinds of fields. Analyzing can be looked at dissecting, exploring, probing into an idea, trying to see why the idea is constituted in this specific way, how it has been constituted and what are the implications of its constitution in this specific way. Synthesizing is a very, very interesting concept. Have you heard of something? It says 2 and 2 is not 4, but 22. Synthesizing is something like that, which says we can sometimes blend ideas, giving rise to much more innovative and bigger ideas. We can bring together different kinds of ideas creating a new kind of combination. We can blend very different kinds of things, apparently things which look not blendable at all and yet come up with things which are interesting, new and very mind boggling. To carry out this process, you need information and for insight, you need more information. And that is how we have to gather information. And how do we gather information? We gather information through observation, we gather ex information through experience, we gather information through reflection and finally, we gather information through reasoning. Now, I would like you to think of it this way, observation, experience, reflection and reasoning are not very different processes, they are in fact parts of the same process. Sometimes they are simultaneous, sometimes they overlap. They are just different ways of looking at information. Observation basically involves watching, studying, seeing. Like for example, if you are looking at birds coming into an area at one point in the year, looking at how many birds are coming in, what time of the year they are coming in, observing them, seeing how they are coming in will form part of your observation. Experience forms part of going through a certain thought, going through a certain feeling, going through a certain experience we might call it, living through it, coming in contact with it. Going back to the example I gave earlier about the migration, about the process of birds coming into an area at a certain time, it might mean going through the experience of watching the birds coming in, going through the experience of watching them build their nests, going through the experience of 
you know, counting them, looking at them, seeing them nestle, etc., can count as experience. Reflection can mean deliberation, consideration, or thinking. Again, going back to the example of birds, one might start thinking of why they come in at a particular time in the year. One might start considering why is it that a particular breed of birds come in to a certain place. One might start thinking also, why is it that they need to build their nests at this time of the year? What do they eat? How do they hatch, etc., etc. And finally, when we come to think in terms of reasoning, we have to do a little bit of interpreting, we have to do an analyzing, and we also have to reckon with various aspects of the problem. We might want to analyze why is it that they need to come? Why is it that they need to change their habitat? Why is it that they need to behave in a certain way at a certain time in the year? How do they find their way? How do they find their way back, etc. All this might form part of reasoning. If the migratory behavior of birds is one kind of information gathering, another kind of information gathering can be something as simple as trying to observe when we get an allergy. Facts, I suddenly become allergic, I suddenly start sneezing at certain times. When do I sneeze? Do I sneeze when there is more breeze? Do I sneeze when there is more dust? Do I sneeze when there is a lot of cloud around me? When do I sneeze? That becomes part of observation. Experience can be, what kind of experience, what kind of bodily uh, or, or physical sensation do I get when I encounter certain things like dust, dirt or maybe clouds or maybe water. That would form part of experience. How do I gather information through experience? Reflection. Can I connect certain things? Will I remember that yes, on a certain day, I did start sneezing uncontrollably when I had done a certain thing. Or maybe someday, I started feeling very uneasy when I ate a certain item. That forms part of reflection. This also is a part of collecting, gathering material. And finally, I would have to reason out. I'll have to finally conclude that yes, probably this is causing me an allergy. Probably under these conditions, I'm becoming allergic. That also is a kind of information that I'm gathering. So, observation, experiencing, reflecting, and analyzing. Parts of the same process, parts of the process of gathering information, which in turn will help us think critically, which in turn will help us think logically. Now, with this, I would like to end my first lecture. The second part of the lecture, I'll be focusing on some other important aspects of critical thinking skills. I shall be going in a little into the history of critical thinking skills and I shall be talking about a few examples, a few paradigms of critical thinking skills. In this lecture, basically I have introduced the concept and I have taken you through the main aspects of what are called the thinking skills. Thank you.